Okay, as you guys can see here, I have the Akai MPK249. Here's just a quick rundown and test of all my keys. But if you notice at this key, it starts to sustain or starts to be sticky. And so this is what we're trying to fix today. This key. All right, so let's get started. Here's some utensils and tools that you're gonna need. A spray bottle, your rubbering alcohol. You got Q-tips, uh, some pliers, screwdrivers, some uh, metal uh, containers to hold all the metals, or magnetic containers to hold the metals. You got your drills and your brushes. And I also have some grease here for some of the keys that I'll show, um, which is an optional step. And so uh, here's the back of the Akai keyboard. Um, notice at the center there are two smaller circles or two smaller screws towards the center and then you have the big screws um, on the perimeter of the keyboard um, also towards the center but the screws towards the center here um, are ultimately what hold the keyboard and the circuit board inside your um, keyboard so you want to screw those together and then when you get towards the center um, you'll notice these two plugs. I labeled them L and R just so I know where they're placed. Uh, if you go to the mini keyboard or the mini circuit board right here, there you'll find where it's located the left and the right. And then moving on to actually cleaning the keyboard, you're going to need your q tips and your um, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. You're going to get the, the q tip, get one of the ends, stick it in there. And ultimately, you just want to clean these four squares of the circuit board. And then you want to get to these uh, rubber sections uh, because they have the contact points as well underneath. So I just do this uh, extra preparation just to clean it all. Um, you want to clean inside of them as well. And then you're going to also hit these uh, black dots, uh, which is the contact points that hit the actual board itself. So here is me actually just cleaning the black contact points. So you want to make sure these are uh, fully cleaned. Um, and then you also want to clean the insides and try to eliminate all the dust as much as possible. Um, this is actually an extra step, but it, you know, it's totally up to you and how you want to clean your uh, keyboard. Uh, I wanted to do a full uh, thorough clean. So you see me here also cleaning the outer the edges um, and as well as these um, circles inside here. Just all the contact points and everything that is within the keyboard itself. And then to install it, all these oval shaped uh, rubber parts and put them through the holes. Here I'm just uh, showing you the, the springs. Um, there's a bottom spring section and a top section. You want to get it with the pliers and just kind of spring it from the bottom to the top when installing it back. Um, when, when uninstalling it, uh, it's the reverse pattern. So you would uh, pull the top and then and it will just kind of detach from the bottom. Um, when you remove these springs, also make sure that you keep the whites together and the blacks together. I'm not sh too sure if this will cause any issues, but um, you'll notice that the white springs are longer than the black. And to install the keys to the actual plate, start from the front where you press the key and then just kind of latch them to the back like so and then from there um, you'll be able to latch the uh, spring towards the back and here's just the section of all the keys where they sit um, if you notice on the very bottom there's some white grease on, and some of them are missing missing some grease so here um, I have some 
Honda grease that I use for some windows on my car. Um, what you can do is just kind of brush it over these sections so that they don't rub against each other. Um, again, um, I think this is more of just, you know, just lubrication, lubrication to keep the keys from squeaking. And uh, so I just added that there just just because I can. Um, it's not necessarily needed, but you know, if you have the grease, why not, you know? And so I have the long board here. I'm just placing it on and then uh, putting that away. And then I have the shorter section of the board and I'm putting that on as well. And this is where it comes in handy to label your uh, ribbons, your cord ribbons. So one is labeled left and one is labeled right. right there just showing that one's labeled left one's right the shorter boards are labeled left the longer boards labeled the right and then here's the section where it attaches your left side and the right side clips and then you also have that one part that is glued to the board um, I had to take that off but um, this is where it, it connects and so here's the keyboard um, finally put together um, and notice that all keys are functioning and there's no sticky keys throughout the whole keyboard. And here's just another tip. Um, go ahead and try to find a cover or some type of um, protective covering you could put on top of the keyboard so that the dust and any spills don't go through to the keys um, when not in use. Uh, this specific one I got from Amazon, but I do not see this seller anymore. Um, kind of sucks, but you know you probably can make your own or just find some type of plastic and um, use this to cover your keyboard uh, thanks for watching and hopefully you learned something here don't forget to subscribe for more reviews and uh, fixer uppers um uh, mervin and i'm signing off